welcome to our lesson for today. We are looking at systems technology and we are going to focus on an overview of application software. Now before we can start with this, let us find out the role of application software. Now the role of application software is to perform a specific task. Now, for example, if you look at your office package, now what it gives is it gives you different applications in one. For example, you can get your Microsoft Word processing, you get your spreadsheet, you get your presentations as well as your database. Now, each of this application does a unique or a specific task. You also have productivity software where you get some versions for mobile devices which we call mobile software and then you also have other types where we can explore a few and look at the function the role as well as these different types of application software now the next one we're going to look at is multimedia software now multimedia is for creating of viewing multimedia content. Now, for example, we're talking of your Encarta or your Flash Media. And then now, it also requires you to have um, free special viewing. So it allows you to actually view this content by just getting the images together with uh, video as well as text. Another example is communication software. Now, communication software allows the exchange of information between two communication devices. For example, where you are able to send an email from one device to another or be able to Skype, communicate with someone over the internet where this other person is using a computer and you're also using a computer from a different location. Right, then we're moving on to compatibility issues. Now, compatibility issues uh, is actually a term that refers to software not matching hardware or operating system. Now, what is important to know is that this compatibility causes applications not to run properly. So now, if your software and your hardware are not compatible, it means that your application might not also run properly. Now, applications are actually created for specific operating system and specific versions of those operating systems. Now, for example, if application software was compiled for Windows XP, it means it will not run properly on Windows 7. It means that you need to upgrade the software. Now, moving on to versions, patches, as well as service packs. Now, versions, what are they? They are upgrades of software after identifying errors and compatibility issues. Then the next one, patches, they fix bugs and problems that are found on applications. Next one. Service pack is a collection of all previous updated patches for an operating system or an application to fix a number of bugs and issues. And then updating software. Why is it important? It's important in order to get the latest features of software and it also allows one to get more fixed security issues and fix bugs of previous versions. Now, other software would need to be updated more regularly. For example, your antiviruses. So you don't have to wait longer for you to update your software. Then when you look at other applications, we have our online web applications. Now these applications, if we look at them, we have this online web application that allows a user to work online without actually worrying about software installation. Now it simply means that you don't have to buy application software and install it on your computer. Now they run on servers that are found on the internet. And one example would be your Google Docs. 
Now, web applications, they offer different use, such as you can get online applications for gaming, networking, storage, and other more. Now, advantages of online applications would be you share your work online, you use them anywhere, meaning you don't have to use them on one specific computer. They can run on any operating system. They are free and there's no need to upgrade. All right, and other more advantages. Then disadvantages, you can't control the upgrades of this application software. You need internet to connect. Security sometimes can be a problem. And then if an application shuts down, you can't use it anymore. So you cannot keep on wanting to use that application if it's no longer available. Right. Then we're going to look at more uh, online web applications, specifically focusing on blogs. Now, what are blogs? Blogs are applications that provide an online diary. So now this actually allows you to do what? To make updates that you can actually update your personal uh, information where you can update what is happening to you every single day and you get posts, videos, as well as pictures that can be added onto your blog. Now, blogs also allow users to respond, comment on your blog as well as interact with each other. Now, sometimes you can get business or political parties who also use blogs to promote their business or to actually promote the political party. Now, advantages of blogs, you get freedom of speech. It's easy to create. You share knowledge. You express your opinion whenever it can be voiced out, and they are very quick to update. And then few disadvantages. You constantly have to display um, or you get this, the display of advertisement from the blog site. Sometimes you get worthless and meaningless responses from different people. And then you have to constantly update because other people will lose interest on your blog. All right. Then we're going to get some good practices. Whenever you plan on creating a blog, you really need to have good practices. Now, good practices would mean that use a catchy blog name, which is very important. Update your site frequently. Be interesting in terms of the content you use. Respond with interaction to your readers and don't allow insults. So you are able to just cut out people who are insulting others so that you can always have then that interest of others wanting to comment on your site. Right, then when you move on, we look at software for physically challenged users. Now, we obviously know that some people would have physical challenges. Now, software for physically challenged users allows people with some hearing, seeing, or physical impairment to be able to use a computer on their own. And let's look at some of these softwares. The first one you can use the Ease of Access Center. Now, what can you use it for? You can enlarge icons as well as fonts. You can use a narrator as well as an audio description. You can use speech recognition and you can use filter and sticky keys in order to use your computer properly and fully on function, even if you have some of these challenges. And then you can also use voice recognition software, screen reader, predictive text software, which are some of the other software that you can get in order for a person who's physically challenged to have full use of their own computer. And then we're going to look at some system utilities. Now we're going to focus on installing and uninstalling software. When software is installed, an icon will appear on your desktop as well as on your start menu to show that a specific software has been installed on your computer. Now all the software as well as hardware on your computer will be stored on the special database that we call a registry. Now, when you work with 
installing a new application, you require to get the CD with the installation file, and then all you have to do is follow the installation wizard with the installation steps. So sometimes if you're not getting the software from a CD, you can always download the software, and after you've downloaded the software, you run the software, and then you also follow the installation steps. Now, whenever you install software, there's a few steps that you have to go through where you have to agree to the license agreement, put in your product key, choose the folder for the program where it should be stored, choose the type of installation you want, install other extras that come with the software, check the updates, or check for the updates that come with the software, register online if you want to have online updates, and you can also take a tour of the program. Now these are some of the steps that you get whenever you have to install software. Now let's look at uninstalling software. Now sometimes when you download um, a file from an internet, now this allows you to just simply download the file and all you have to do is run the installation file that we call a .exe file. Now, when you uninstall software or uninstall an application, you can do that by actually going to the control panel and opening the programs and features. And then when you get there, this is the picture that you will see. You can see there it's control panel, all control panel items. Then you get your programs and features. Now, this is a way of ensuring that an application has been completely removed from the system registry. Now, deleting, all right, which is very important. When you delete an application, you actually not uninstalling the application because what happens is it can actually lead to errors as well as problems on your computer. And that is it for our lesson for today on application software. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Goodbye.